uh, as a side to that, that's if we're side. talking derivatives, because there's another set of derivatives that we kind of didn't speak on, and that's the like the I wouldn't call them true, but like the tr like the like the direct hex derivatives, like mm -hmm. your maxi and that like all that s system of things. And I believe personally, I mean, like you can see it in the chart right now, you know, that like those that a lot of those derivatives will near to the for the nearer to the fork we go will perform worse. Um, but this is my opinion is because people like li liquid hex is, you know, for whatever value you're going to use it for, whether it be putting it into this those those other platforms or just having it for the fork there's more of a utility in having you know liquid available hex as opposed to a token that represents a 10 year stake or a seven year stake or a, you mm -hmm. know i mean i mean some of them but is what's the one that i'm have in front of me right now desi for instance is like in price and hex is down i mean down to 84 percent of a hex you know um that's pretty low comparatively to where it was at, you know? And I, I mean, and I, I think that, that those, that those narratives that that will shift after Pulse chains launch. And I think that in the longer term, as we get closer to some of those dates, you know, the three year, the one, five year or whatever dates that they're, they each have, I think that they'll get a lot closer to parity, if not trade at a premium. But for now, as we run up into the fork, feels like those might continue to underperform well we're even seeing that what you just said now so base and trio the two shorter perpetuals they're trading pretty much one for one at hex and then trio is like a two percent premium it's fairly negligible but lucky mm -hmm. and desi the two longer ones the seven year and the 10 year one are trading at you know a 13 and a and a 16 percent discount relative to hex and that's like and one to one hex, not even the hex that it's accrued over time. So you're yeah. seeing the things that end sooner have less of a discount, and the things that are ending later have more of a discount, which is exactly what you were saying. Yep, exactly. And uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I, that's that's not to say that they're not like. I mean, I like I said, I understand the like when we we're talking about value propositions of hex on either chain. It's super important to note that like I get that they have that there is a significant advantage. To having fifty, if you have maxi versus a fifteen-year stake, if you started at the same day, there is a significant advantage to unstaking all those coins at once and distributing them versus paying the gas fee yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, like those are going to, on Ethereum side, uh, without sharding, and even with sharding and increased popularity in the network and shit. You know, like, like those are going to be expensive stakes to unstake. You know, mm -hmm. in, in the future, so. That be you know that's something to consider. That's why I do think that they're you know just like any good derivative product, there are, there should be premiums and discounts all along the way, and the market will vary you know change their their belief on them based on the narrative and the the macro you know so um, I'm just something to think about. That's like I said, we just uh, we we it's a it's a, a whole, like I feel like there's there's very different versions of derivatives with hex you know you've got the like we got hedron and icosa and even communist to another degree you know and the and, then you've got the, <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got the you know the the hex derivatives uh, that are like more like you know like their stake their stakes derivatives you know like the desi lucky base and all that they're, I mean super interesting I mean all all of it's awesome I mean like I said more coins Especially free ones are super cool.